You're right, Josh. Good to be here again. So um, looks like we've got quite a tight contest here uh, between Colleen and, and Millie. This is going to be on paper. It should be our tightest match of the day. Yeah, nothing in, in it ranking-wise. I think uh, a few places in the world rankings. Uh, they probably met quite a few times before, so uh, it should be really interesting. Both, uh, both on the up, both improving. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, I think should uh, should be a, a tight contest in, in store here. Um, and uh, I think, you know, the previous from what Millie was saying, I don't think they've played on PSA for a while, but the last result they had was a, it was a tight 3 2 so I think it's, it's looking good for a, a good contest for the crowd tonight. Yeah, two athletic girls, so we should see uh, plenty of action. So we'll, we'll wait to join uh, tournament MC Paul Walters down on courtside. Welcome back to our second semi-final session and our second ladies semi-final match. The first player on the court is from France. She's making her third appearance in the semi-finals of the European Individual Close Cross Championships. Please welcome second highest ranked player Colleen Omar. <laughs> and her opponent is from England. She's making her debut in this championship. She's the highest ranked English player in the championship. She's from Derbyshire. Please give a warm welcome to Millie Tomlinson. So you joined me yesterday, Rich, to watch uh, Colleen play, uh, and Millie, actually. Um, Colleen, obviously, a new starter at the University of Nottingham. Um, did you have any tips for her uh, after yesterday's match? Yeah, I had a little chat with her, um, and I would have with Millie as well. Um, the, uh, I think the, the conclusion we came to when we watched both of them play yesterday was a little bit of a s sort of nervous start. Millie was... Um, you know, hitting decent length, but only length. And uh, Colleen um, and her opponent, was Lucy, wasn't she? Um, hmm. They they just seemed to be a little bit off target and getting each other's way. And probably for a game and a half, it was like that. Wasn't yeah. It? So it could be nerves, it, you know. Um. Yeah, I think, you know, yesterday there was obviously that, it was just a bit loose on it down the backhand side from Colleen. And Millie got drawn into hitting quite hard early on, and it, it wasn't until the matches started to unfold that we started to see their, their true potential, really, I thought. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting to see who starts the better out of the two in this, this match, because on paper, it should be a really tight match, so it, every bit counts, doesn't it? And who can start best might set the tone for the match. Yeah. I mean, the one who had the hardest match, if that's anything to, to think about, is Colleen, I think. She, she got pushed a little bit tougher. Um, Millie seemed to uh, benefit from a little collapse in the end. Um, did you get happen to see any of the matches earlier on, Rich? No, I wasn't here this afternoon, but okay. uh, doing a little bit of coaching myself, so... Uh, <laughs> Getting a shift in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, two probably a bit more one-sided affairs uh, in our first two semi-finals. Um, in the women's, we had, um, obviously, Camille Serm was looking in fine form in that first semi-final. Um, she took that three games to love, and... Uh, Equally so, in the second of our semi-finals, Greg, uh, Greg pushed through three love, um, looking very strong again, again against Nicky Muller. Um, so, be interesting to see. I think these these second two sets of semi-finals will, I, I think, be a lot tighter. It'll this be a one lot looks closer, tight. I think, sure. I think the match later on in the men's as well is looking like a tight fight. James and and Borka have played their last encounter actually was a three tour in the Bellevue Classic. So. Should be two really good semi-finals this evening. Yeah, in this, this good session. contest. 
So if we look to their last few tournaments, um, Millie's up to number 23 in the world. She was recently a runner-up in the Irish Open and winner of the Granite Open. Um, whereas Colleen recently took the French national title. Uh, she's currently ranked at 30 in the world. So we've only got a seven-point difference in world rankings. So there really isn't a lot between these two. Yeah, I wonder if either of them listened to the commentary uh, after the match. Uh, Did you listen to yourself back? Yeah, yeah I listened to myself. <laughs> <laughs> See how you performed. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> what, what did you give yourself? I gave myself a 10. Did you get a 10? Yeah, I got a 10. Uh, yeah. No, there's always room for improvement. I had a 9 for me. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, interesting. We've switched out the, the on-court court maintenance team today. We've, we've sat to university guys and got some some helpful squash enthusiasts on the uh, on the old mops and glass polishers. That's good. You'll see them in the red working uh, working in between the games this time. I think as long as they're uh, they're sharp, if any water or sweat goes onto the the court surface, it's always bugbear of mine watching how long they take. Everybody takes to. Oh, we've got an eager team now. They're very <laughs> eager. They're on the edge of their seats, ready, ready and waiting. They might be needed later with Borker. He's, he's quite a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see uh, AJ Bell sponsoring this event. Um, I believe the chief executive was a, a Nottingham University graduate. I think they sponsored a couple of events recently at, on the campus. Yeah, very good. Squash, always uh, thankful for anything that comes their way. It's a sport that's always chasing the funding for, for tournaments and big events, and even for coaching, really. Mm. And here we go. So it looks like Millie's to serve. Just a few last minute drop shots there from Colleen. Oh, I still want to. Nice to leave it on that, yeah. Finish on the knockup. Both these girls quite strong movers around the court, quite good physically, aren't they, Rich? Yeah, as long as they as long as they push up, and th 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 those were some of the things that we said. Um, I think Millie, when she pushed up, she mm. just made life easy for herself yeah. in a her match yesterday. Um, Colleen had a fight all the way, but Colleen was was pushing up quite nicely. Mm. I think it was noticeable as the game went on was they started to work in more of their uh, more of their variations into the game, and certainly on Millie's front. I, Big standout, I think, was her backhand drop once she started to get that into the game as the, the match progressed yesterday. Um, so it'd be nice to see her do that earlier on in this match. Yeah. And try and use her skills a bit more. I think that was something that she needs to try and do more and earlier on. That's the one thing. When, when you've got a, a centre like this, and, and they've both been probably hitting on, on courts around the back, um, behind this front wall, in fact, mm. um, you should have been practising and... and you know, getting some of those short skills going um, early in a in a practice, so that you come on court and you're straight in there. You've got it measured. You just feel the new court. Because there is a difference in this court. You've, mm. Have you played on it? I haven't played on this one, but I've played on quite a lot of glass courts now. Um, my my resident court in Manchester is the glass court. So, mm. but y this is your this is your stable. Isn't it? This is your uh, your usual oh, lesson I love, court. I love playing on this court. It's it's really straight and true and accurate. Now, for people who are watching, you, you see the blue colour. It's not um, it's not a sort of an opaque paint. It's actually dots. It's like a like a golf ball look. You know, it's got a whole lot of little dots, and the dots are quite rough, um, and they sort of stop the ball. So if there's a slight angle mm. when you hit it into the front corner, that ball will stop. And similarly at the back, if it just shaves the wall, in the corner, sticks more. in the corner. It rewards good squash, doesn't it? Yeah, Rich? that's that's it. It's a very fast front ball, this, this glass court. Let's see. She's gone for the hammer start. Yeah. <laughs> so we're underway in this, of our second women's semi finals. Oh, there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ref setting the tone early doors with a no yeah. let. <laughs> yeah, to go around.
I think fair enough, actually. Yeah, I think that's fair. Scrappy yeah, couple of rallies scrappy to get start, start, yeah. Loose start, nothing short yet. There from Millie. Okay. Yeah, that ball yeah. was pulled off the wall by Millie, so. Fair decision, I think. Yeah. Well, that's a good finish there from Colleen. That's what Colleen did well yeah. yesterday when she mm -hmm. got in front. She put the straight one in nicely. Great boast from a very defensive position. Taking a time between points, just trying to settle, I think, there. It's probably quite good signs early on. Both girls very trying nice. to find their, their concentration. It's a and warning to Millie, don't leave it loose. She, she did that well yesterday in the end of the match, Colleen. Interesting, both of these benefiting from university squash. Colleen about to and Millie, a, a Yale graduate. I she was one you were trying to tap up, weren't you, Rich? I was just talking to Millie a short <laughs> while ago, and she said, to, uh, I said, come on, Millie, you've got to come to Nottingham. I think she's, uh, she's thinking of a master's, but the course that she wants to do, we can't offer her here. So oh, OK. She might, she might go to Trent, so she might still be in Nottingham. Yes, it's good, it's starting to build that base of players, isn't it, in Nottingham now? Yeah. Really gaining some momentum off the back of the, the university squash. Yes. Very, uh, very short racket preparation there, going into that front corner. Just showing the, the straight drop that she'd worked in so nicely earlier on. Yeah. And playing it off And the that's line. a lesson for people. You play the obvious shot, the nice straight shot, and people have to cover that. And then when they come dashing in, you some, can change your shot. It's like setting a scene of a story, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, setting of the scene, yeah. Introducing characters as the match goes on. Lovely shot from Good. So at the really. moment, the person that's leading is the one that has actually made the play to the front and, and moved, played the volley drops and the boast into the front. Millie's just recovering and digging out at the moment, so she's got to get herself better placed. She's yet to show her, her skills like that back end of the match yesterday, Millie. Yeah. She's not quite settled yet. Colleen's looked to be the more State. attacking of the two. And as I say that, she puts it in the tin, of course. <laughs> better length, better yeah, length. That's a nice line. Yes. So the opportunities around the middle. Yeah, that's the first time that Millie's actually hit a great length and then taken her in short. And there you go. Good point. Oh. Mm. Not making the most of that opportunity there. It's interesting, isn't it? Colleen has definitely shown more signs of wanting to attack earlier on in this match, but we find ourselves at six all in the first game. Yeah. And Millie's just starting to show signs of, of settling into it a bit more. Hitting better lines and looking to be a bit more attacking yeah, from around the middle. That's a great shot, great shot. There again, got herself a position, totally balanced, balanced and then can concentrate on the, the quality of the shot. Lovely length to the back. 
So that's Colleen's fourth mistake. Yes. So that's why Millie has come back. Four mistakes off mm. that score. Simple that decision, isn't it? And out, seven, eight. We talked about serves yesterday and how good there's, James's serve is. There was a lot of discussion on serves yesterday. Mm. I think Rafael Candra with his uh, back to his opponent with his backhand uh, got started on that conversation of lob serves. And I think noticeable quite a few players looking to use the serve in know. this uh, this tournament. Have you got a preference on the serve, Rich? A lob serve for you, or is yeah, it? Yeah, for me, lob serve. Um, I'm an extremely mean coach, and when I'm rallying or doing anything with kids, I serve my best. And for a couple of years, they nearly want to give up squat. <laughs> And then suddenly they learn how to return a good serve. And then they realize how good um, it can be and how much pressure you can put on somebody. At pro level, it reduces the pressure, but that's a better height. Certainly at junior level, the serve, I think, can make such a difference at the younger age groups. Ooh. Oh. 10 8, game ball. Do you think they'd be any good at mud wrestling as well? <laughs> Four left. So they've been tough on Millie there. Eight, yeah, eight. I think that's a little harsh. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's the Short hold. So that's our first game, 11-8 to Colleen. I, I, I think she deserved that overall. I think she looked to do the right things from the start and it was just a few errors creeping in. Millie steadied out all the way through but she's definitely got to try and get her skills into it and get some of the control that she showed in the mid part of that game for me to come through a little bit more. What do you think Rich? Yeah I, I mean I'm a boring statist <laughs> statistician <laughs> with uh, um, with things like winners, errors, that sort of thing and I, I think that Colleen probably went for things most of the time and although she she did have that little spell of making two or three errors i think the average was more like uh, six winners maybe yeah to two or three errors um whereas millie i only think she attacked the front maybe maybe twice mm. three times a yeah body definitely burst, held off it a little bit more and tried to be a bit more steady but we saw that yesterday with yeah that's how her she start started to the match yeah. she seems to start very much to the back and gradually start to get more and more of a her weapons into the game. Yeah, so at pro level, I mean, you know, this is where the mental side of things comes in. If you're nervous, you don't want to play your shots, you just don't get anywhere. That's a beautiful and shot, wasn't yeah, it, to finish that um, game? She came in with low racket preparation, but big threat, really, because mm. it could have been a little punch down the wall. Yeah. So here's our team in red. <laughs> <laughs> One of them cleaning the... Um, the tin so that you can see, see through the tin, is it? Or yeah, I think yeah. we're getting that camera angle nice yeah. and uh, prepped. So Millie's got a turn positive. She's. Mm. Uh, I, I thought the length was a bit short for Millie down the backhand wall. Yeah, if, uh, for anybody who's uh, keen to learn sort of the good the good side of squash and the right targets that ball's got to get behind those service boxes that on each side that's if it doesn't get behind there you're not moving your opponent the maximum distance out of position so now look at that shot you see she's doing that and then in the game it dropped in there short mm. and that's yeah it's often the case though isn't it that the length starts to fall a little bit short when you get into some of the matches and the pressure gets yeah The longer one. Right, there you go. So they. That 
a tight ball. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yeah, it's deep That's enough, good. wasn't it, to allow that to in there. When you're a pro, you can hit things that are right glued to the wall. So, um, you know, it's fair enough. She could have got there. It would have been a tough shot to play, but... Shot. Yeah, well finished. There again, first to attack. I think Colleen's going to mm. benefit from that. That's a great attacking Good. length. Two love. Just matching that pace to the height on the front wall as well. Yeah. was a no-let for me. Just creating their own interference, really. There was a line round Millie. I don't think Millie had moved to the wrong position. No. I think she'd, she'd more, moved. More clean taking the wrong line, yeah. I thought. There we go. She's gone, she's gone to the line the in front, hasn't she? The ball's gone straight from Millie, so, yeah. Straight from now. And Millie will have to watch that because she, she was short again and Colleen, Colleen's taking a short line to the ball, straight straight to the ball. Unless Millie keeps the length, she's going to give away mm. some points there if she the slightest bit loose. I think Millie got away with that really. She she was forced to lift up on that ball and Colleen's hit a poor shot off her loose loose return from Millie. Short length again. Mm. Both of them just jostling a little bit for position, aren't they, at this point in the second game? Clipping the top of the tin there. Yeah. Again. She's done that a couple of times where she's off the returner, the returner serve, look to step up and attack. And That's another lesson from uh, from me for Millie on the serve again. Well, if you watch Starts quite off. often off the serve, she's, she's not stepping up onto the tee. It's more sort of just casually moving across and not anticipating the, the attack from Colleen. Just watching that last serve from Colleen as well, you, you'd think Millie could get a few points because if you watch Colleen's step off the serve is, is backwards as well. Quite often you can catch players out by taking it in early off the serve because they haven't moved efficiently to the tee to cover the whole court off the serve and being a bit lazy in their movement. That's a nice length. A good really. length. She got in well there. There was a little bit of a bump on the way through but she got in well. Colleen's still the one that's being positive, taking it in, taking it in on the volley, straight shot. That's better. Look, position. That's a... Mm -hmm. See the positional difference that it mm -hmm. made there. Good work. Mm. A little bit better from Millie here. Up it goes.
good attacking cross court there from Millie. Just getting the ball running away from her opponent. Still winning almost all of the points at the back of the court. Yeah. So hasn't shown the confidence yet, but she's certainly more in the middle of the court. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was space to play there. Yeah. Hard strip attacking man. That was nice off hands at the front there. See what the ref's decision is. The ref said let, I think. Just let it fall. I agree, hands soft. Tight drop, but. Wasn't Millie tight was enough, though. Yeah, Millie yeah. was up again, so Millie's not hanging back anymore, and I like it again, so she's trying to keep the middle more. And out, six eight. Millie's still got this two-point cushion from that strong mid part of this game. Be interested to see if she can hang on to that and take the second game here. Just forcing the boast. Just got Colleen pushing back in the court a little bit again. Be interested to see if she can open up a chance. But Last minute hold there. Doesn't matter when you hold that long, it doesn't matter That's the quality of shot quite as much, does it, Rich? Yeah. Oh, that was that was sort of a guess from Millie. Um, yeah. It, it wasn't a sort of. Leave, Silly, really, because that's. Leave a split step till later. Because Millie's not taking the pace off the ball and it's coming right yeah. back to the service boxes. She's just leaving that court uh, ball in the middle of the court. It's always costly if you do that. Always putting yourself at risk of the stroke. So back tied in points at eight all. Length. Just fading away. Nine, eight. Getting good position again, Colleen. It's the first shot for a while that Millie's really looked to whip in that boast from that forehand side. She finds herself just that little bit more in front. Some good tight width from Colleen though. The player's just matching it down the backhand side. Yeah, that had to be. So at nine all. It's nice and tense in this second game. A little unlucky they're coming out of the, the yeah, corner. Yeah, just clipping that corner. Saw her do that quite a bit yesterday. Far less today. And out, no, no. Okay, both of you please play on more continuously. I don't want any more of these games. Be ready for the serve. Okay, both of you. Play on. No, no. Ref just looking to try and set a bit of tone. 
But all it's ended up with a longer interval, really. I don't know if there's much need for the ref to interfere there. I didn't see anything that. No, just I think it's just a bit of time wasting. That the ref was referring to, but quite often that then ends up with more time wasted. <laughs> Important time for Millie because she doesn't want to go too down. Hey, nice shot. there's the first. Guess what? Millie's first drop. Yeah, <laughs> first <laughs> drop of the game. <laughs> Soft hands again. That was a little harsh, I thought. I thought that the quality of the ball from Millie, for me, was too good. I thought the uh, the distance that Colleen had to move made it a, a retrievable shot, but not a winning position. Plenty of French gesturing again. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure that the ref knows that she doesn't think Millie's clearing, but... If she was hitting straight and true and long enough, there wouldn't be these issues, but she's not on the game. Look at that, the kick off the wall, you see how wide mm. that is? Yeah, it's just both players' movement just clashing a little bit, and I think you're right, it's just really not quite hitting it as precise as she'd like at this point. It's just causing that little bit more interference, isn't it? Time waste? Yeah. The refs are certainly getting involved <laughs> in yeah. this second game. <laughs> I think they're doing the right thing and trying to be quite harsh with their decisions. If they, if they it's do the both ways, you know, right. in the end, it'll be fair. So. To open space, but Fortune so into yeah, there really was a takes that second game 12 10. That was a welcome freebie, the last one for Millie. Um, yeah, again, you know, uh, I know I was a bit sarcastic about her first drop there, but mm. she hasn't dropped, she hasn't done no. anything really. She played one boast, maybe I think she played one, one attacking boast one attacking and one straight boast, drop there, really. And one straight drop, she lost the point on that other drop, which was a, a counter up front. It's not enough. Um, I think you're right. I think she's got to use her skills. We saw that yesterday. Once she started to use her skills, it paid dividends. But for me there, it's, it's Colleen who's winning or losing this match, isn't it, so mm -hmm. far? You saw that in the first game. She hit more winners than errors and, and took the game there. A few more errors and just came out on the other side. So be interested to see how Millie approaches this third game and whether... Taking one game gives her that little bit more confidence to maybe try a few more of her, her skills and taking the ball in. Or whether Colleen maybe even looks to be a bit more steady. You just don't know, do you, how they'll approach it? Yeah. 
well again. I, you know, I thought that was going to be a valuable game for Millie, and I think uh, one way or the other she came through. So one all, she's got time to steady down and start playing the short stuff in. But certainly, I could see uh, take it in a lot more and try and be a lot more uh, attacking because. We saw that yesterday. She did once she started attacking. She really started to push on in the game. Again, we're getting pl plenty of interference. <laughs> yeah, it's when you watch some uh, some of the slow mo stuff, you can see. Um, a little bit too much standing after the shot, mm. you know. Play a shot and don't actually do too much yeah. moving. Give minimum, uh, minimum, minimum park, line. <laughs> minimum line, minimum park to the ball. Uh, the refs were getting a bit fed up of it, and uh, they certainly ooh. tried to clamp down on it in that second game, yeah. and trying trying to give us a, a nice smooth playing match. I'd say if Millie wants to get somewhere, she's going to have to start working that ball in to other areas of the court. harder and hit down on it a bit more in that opening rally of this third game. Long one. Certainly get some benefit from that off this fast front wall. You start to hit hit down on it and attack attack to length. So it really That's does fly away. It's a good opportunity yeah. with a nice little wrist from Millie. Mistake. Christmas comes early. Mm. Another error from Colleen. Leaves Millie fall of up in this third game. It's a start that she would have wanted starts to get to be a, a lead that you find difficult to claw back really you know, it's obviously been done many times but it's not ideal for Colleen still not a hell of a lot shown from really going in short in terms of quality yet there's a little bit more there. One drop shot, one mm. burst. Stayed in the middle. If anything, the only thing that's changed is she seems to be hitting it a lot harder to land <laughs> so far in this this game. But it's opened up a five love lead. Top of the ten. It's a good shot from Colleen, wasn't it? Yeah, Millie just didn't get the touch in the front there. Just maybe too too much st stroke on the ball rather than just touching it in. And another oh. shot. Yeah. Just starting to show signs of going for that a little bit more. This um, game, all of a sudden, positivity, more to the front. There you go, another one to the front. Quite often that happens, doesn't it, when players get a bit of a lead that they feel more confident mm -hmm. in working in a few of these shots. So, what's Colleen got in a... Yes, 
stroke. Yeah. Three, six. Again, up front, Colleen, the one that can keep the ball tightest on that you stroke up front. Yes. Millie's struggling there. Maybe that's why she's been a little bit negative when she goes up into those front corners. Keep hearing murmurs from the back of this building of that netball tournament that's going on as well, Rich. Can <laughs> you? <laughs> There's quite a big event going on. There's two big events in this yeah. facility. It just shows the size of of the new sports centre, really, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Seven three. So I've liked Millie's position in this in this game as well as the attack. So. Nice long length. Mm. Another long, long length. She's right up there, position-wise, much better. It's just knocking Kaleem back and back in that court, isn't it? Yeah. Just waiting for that right opportunity. Thank you. Again, Colleen, the tight one up in the mm. front. Very fair of Millie calling her double hit there. Yes, that four seven. Mm. That's a cool length. Length. Very good length. Awesome. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. again it's that not quality the quality in the front, in the front is, it? is it? I think it's um That's a very attacking base from Millie. Yeah. That's more than likely. That's what we want to see, isn't it? It's good from a very defensive position. Mm. Just looking to use a bit of initiative. Holding position. Good shot. There you go. Nice hands there. Yeah. Just taking the pace off, Hang keeping it tight. Seven. Instead of going for the drop there, that, that little kill, she was wise to do that because she'd been setting the ball up a little bit there. Yep. Wasn't alert to that, I mm. don't think, huh? No. no. We referred to that earlier, didn't we? Just trying to be a bit more alert off the serve and pick up when player looks to attack off it. Clean just staying within touching distance. Just get to this back end of this third game. No, no, I don't agree with this. No. Second yeah. bounce was right on the short line. Yeah. It was a long way back. Mm. That's where it can get a bit excessive when the refs try and make them play the ball. Mm. Right, I'm just taking a sensible decision. Good reply. Uh, 
that's not nice. yeah. Just using that, that straight drop to finish off that game. 11-8 in that third game. It was a straight drop really. without deception. It was just to yeah. the ball, get the racket down, get the body down. Just trying to use those hands, isn't yeah. it? Just take the pace off it. So interestingly, Millie takes this uh, our second semi-final and leads two games to one now. Still not massively attacking, but attacking a little bit more. And I think showing the reward for just using a few more of her her abilities at the front of the court in, in these last two games. Colleen's still probably making a few too many errors, which she didn't make as many in that first game. And I, I think that's been the difference for me is, is Millie's looked to use the front of the court a little bit more. Yeah. Not a hell of a lot more, but a little bit more. And and she should have done that from the start. And the same mm. with the match yesterday. So it's probably something to take away. Maybe have a have a little look at how she's working those spaces because those spaces, you know, those opportunities to play to the front where your opponent isn't, it, yeah, they happen straight away. Mm. First rally. If, that, yeah. if it happens in the first rally, you must put it in. Yeah, it's just it's just reading the situations and being confident in the skills, isn't it? Mm. To maximise what you're opening up. So that that's an area of fear up front for a lot of players. They they run into those front mm. corners and they don't want to leave the ball um, for an opponent to get a penalty stroke. So they play away from themselves. And then the in the long run, what you don't do is you don't develop. The, the, skills the skills that you need, that yeah. you need to just put that ball in with a nice soft touch. So, um, it's be interesting to see how Colleen reacts here. Definitely been the more positive of the two. We've got, we've got uh, her boyfriend Adam in her corner as well, also joining you at Nottingham Uni. Yep. And he's doing physio, so she'll have her own physio. Yeah. <laughs> Amusingly, a Adam's probably one of the most injured players there is, and <laughs> he's now moving into a physio course. He's had quite a few injuries over his uh, over his career, Adam, hasn't he? He's nice and nice and fit at the moment, though. I hear. Yeah, yeah. So this is why they're so close in the rankings, because it's a, a tight battle. Not a lot in it. Few errors, few winners. Only the difference. I think the use of height like that has helped Millie keep her position. There's another one where she's held the position. to reset just using that little bit of height doesn't it yeah. she's getting the, uh, the error out of Colleen with a nice long ball to the back oh yes and yeah, she took it in look at the benefit of that would you suggest for a player like Millie just to try and look to put the ball in quickly if she's feeling less confident with her shots to just give herself that little bit more margin on it. Um, no, this is where I work with, with differences in pace. Mm. I think if you're going to put the ball in slowly, take your time mm. and play it as perfectly as you can and yeah. reduce the amount of deception, but just play a really perfect mm. straight tight shot. And then all of a sudden you might accelerate and play something different just to catch your opponent by surprise. And that sort of difference in pace, very hard for people to adjust to. But it does mean that when you're going for your most, your, your shot that requires the most skill, mm. you're concentrating really hard. And I think that what Colleen does in the front, and she's going to go for a little drop shot, oh, she's not going to get that. When Colleen goes for a drop shot, she really mm. concentrates, gets yeah. down. Good control on the racket face. One of those leads again. Yeah, she got this in the last game as well, didn't she? Yeah, got off to and a she's nice done this lead. more on length, but she has been positive to the front. So Colleen's got to constantly push up. But Millie's gone for height there again, the height. Mm. 
Oh, and she had to stay Just behind. Stunning that ball there mm. as well. Mm. It's that variation to the front as well in paces as well that yeah. comes out. Two foul. Tight ball. Oh, Very that's good. nice. He finished. I think three, three in a row. It. In position, three in a row, straight in. Good confidence to do that. This happened in the last game, didn't it? And Millie getting a lead and then Colleen sort of pulling it back. Before Millie had a second little burst towards the end of the game. It's a good length. Good mm. length. Oh, nice. that's nice. And that again, you see her hands are down yeah. really low, and you've got to worry about that drop shot. So she drew Millie. And then in, the angle and works. And the angle works so well. So again, that's what Millie needs to do. Not so much stroking the drop in there as just rack it down, reach for it. Do you think about Rich? Do you think that's fair? I think the ball was tight, but yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the effort to clear, isn't it? Yeah. And Millie was up right up on that shot. Yeah. She had to work very hard to get to the front to go and collect that ball, and then she couldn't get out the way. That's that's what it amounts to. I mean, Millie had done the good pressure work. It's a three point gap here in the fourth game, seven four to Millie. She looks to try and close out this match, our second semi-final of the day in the women's tournament. Again, Colleen got in. For the fourth time, chopping it into those front corners, nice and straight. trying to be a bit too clever there yeah I mean you know it could have been the right shot but she just got excited about it and it, it, it would have worked because Millie was committed to that straight drop wasn't she again I think she doesn't realize how much Millie really needed to cover the drop shot she could have held on to it maybe a little bit longer I just had that little bit more margin on it equally yeah. Points adding up now. Four point lead to Millie. Okay, not happy with that one. I've seen those given as lets. Hmm. It's quite a big uh, mountain to climb now. Four points. Game difference. The fighter, though, Colleen, she gets stuck in, doesn't she, Rich? Yeah, she's certainly sort of gone for the power injection here, just to nice position she's got. hold on the volley yeah. mm. oh and Millie gets a tight one and again Colleen with the tight Thank one you. losing a bit of patience there I think opens up five match balls for Millie in this our second semi-final and she takes yeah. it on yeah, the first yeah. attempt the first time. so Millie takes it three games to one joins Camille Sermon our final our women's Thank final you. tomorrow 
I think she did well there. So she showed, showed some, uh, some confidence as the game went on, Melly. And her structure certainly allowed her to benefit off everything that was coming her way. We're joined now on courtside with tournament MC Paul Walters. Millie, really, I know you you enjoy this. I'll try and make it as loose and comfortable as I can. First of all, first of all, for you, you your thought, your thoughts on the match. First of all, uh, yeah, I always thought it was a really tough match. Uh, first game was brutal. She's got a good hold and still a lot quicker base. I need to definitely watch her. Yeah, it's first game against Italian, so. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Um, another challenge, um, a bigger challenge. Yeah, it's definitely a bigger challenge. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing opportunity to play tomorrow. So I hope I can learn something and just play the best I can. And hopefully, having a little, little bit of local support will uh, will help as well. Yeah, hopefully my parents will make it tomorrow. My dad just forgot. <laughs> well, we wish you well. And Colleen, if I may, just have a have a few words. A, a tough match, but you know you always do well in this tournament. And you, you know it's a semi-final, it's another semi-final, and I'm sure you're disappointed for yourself. And you know you've got to, to represent France again tomorrow. Um, you know, just something to look forward to. But again, your your thoughts in your words. Uh, to be honest, like, yeah, I just felt bad. <laughs> I felt bad. I just couldn't do anything. Um, so yeah, I'm very disappointed to lose today, but we have to work better. So. Try and have a really good afternoon today. Tomorrow I have a, a big match coming. I just need to not forget about this match, but yeah, I will try to work for tomorrow to be focused for tomorrow because I don't want to be. Uh, I just want to win the match tomorrow. I know Mila is a fast player. She's going to be a Bengalis and I know this house. And yeah, just good luck to Colin tomorrow and to him. And yeah, I hope to be in the program again. But you always got a great attitude. You always come with a big smile. You always play and fight to the very end. We saw that yesterday, and, and we saw that again today. It wasn't your day today, but congratulations on a, a good tournament. We wish you well tomorrow, and we look forward to seeing you on, on this court. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both semi-finalists. We will have just a few moments just to prepare the court before we welcome the players onto court for our, our second men's semi-final. Thank you. So thank you for joining us at Squashwell.tv and on our Facebook page and Squashwell.com. We'll have a short break here and then we'll be back for our second men's semi-final, which looks to be a great match between James Wallstrop and Borka Golan. See you shortly. <laughs> 